Hello, today we're going to cover Business Calculus, Section 1.5 on Continuity. So we're leading directly in from the limits that we learned last time. Now the limits, if you remember, they would exist when they meet up at that same place. So there could be a hole, but as long as they met up, it's okay. Now continuity is more specific. It's harder to be continuous than it is to have a limit. So to, to be continuous, think of a pencil. You have to be able to draw the line without picking up your pencil at all. So it's okay if there's kind of a break as long as you don't pick up your pencil. So if those dots meet at the same place and if they connect. So whenever we had that gap, that hole, that would have a limit but it would not be continuous. So it's even more picky. So continuousness is even harder. Now you're going to notice this kind of pattern in the XYZ problems where it's this three A um, ABC part, true, false, true. Or true, yeah, true, false, true, false, true, false. So in these problems, they give you three values. They give you two normal non-suspicious ones surrounding the suspicious one. So just keep this in mind. Don't miss easy points. So in this problem right here that it has this break, the only value that I'm suspicious of is two. So everything below two is fine. It's this nice straight line, no problems. Everything above two is fine, no problems. Straight line, no holes, no gaps. It's only two that I'm worried about. So without even thinking, I know that it's continuous at one and it's continuous at three, no problems. The only one I'm unsure of is right here at two. So looking at the image, I can see that sure enough, there's a break. I'd have to pick up my pencil. It would not be continuous. He would also not have a limit there to connect it back to our previous lesson. Okay, so it has to be connected. So that means each individual value has to be there. It has to be defined, no holes. The limit has to exist, so no gaps. And the limit has to be the value that you would expect. That just means it has to connect and have a value there, no holes. So let's look at more examples. This one, they've got the idea, the piecewise function with no graph. So looking back at this one first, if I didn't have the picture to go by, and I were looking at that suspicious value of two. Well, plugging in right here, the value of two, two minus one is one. So I can see right here, I had the value of x of two, y of one, right here, this dot. Plugging in this one right here, it was this straight horizontal line that no matter what x value I picked, the y was three. So this point right here was two comma three these y values did not meet. One and three did not connect. Since one was not equal to three, that told me that this was discontinuous right there when the x was at that gap of two. So on this one without the picture, let's do that same thing. So I'm gonna look at the value of negative five. What's going on right there? So if I plug negative five into the top one, three fifths times negative five plus one, Am I going to get the same thing as if I plug negative 5 into the bottom one? Would they meet up? Is there a gap? So this one would reduce to a negative 3 plus 1, which would be negative 2, while this one would give me, remember they would not cancel, a negative 10. So these of course are not equal, so that means right here it would not be continuous at x equals negative 5. So this one right here, the answer would be no, it is not continuous. So the question asked which one is, so let's look through these others. So this one right here, is it going to be continuous at negative 5? So let's try it again. 3 fifths times the negative 5 minus 1. Is that going to be equal to, let's put a question mark there, that's our question, 2 times negative 5 plus 6. So this one, I would again cancel, that'd be negative three minus one, which is a negative four. And sure enough, this one works out because this would be negative 10 plus six, which is also equal to negative four. So that means even though the lines look different, they're different shapes, different slopes, all of that, they meet up at the same point. They would both share the value of negative five, negative four. They would both meet at that point on the graph. So the answer to this question is g of x. g of x is continuous at negative 5. Okay, 
here's another one of those true, 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 false, false, false questions. Again, don't get, don't miss easy points on these. Negative two is true. Zero is true, no question. The only one that I was suspicious of was the middle here at negative one. This one may have been true or false. This one was fine, that one was fine. Back here, it's a smooth continuous curve. Up here, it's a smooth continuous curve. So right here, if I have the picture, I see right here that they meet in the middle. So I know that this one is good. He is continuous, it is true. Let's just double check with the numbers by plugging again the negative one into the top and the bottom. And sure enough, these both give me the same value of negative two. Right here, this one was always negative two. So it was true. So again, it's one of those concepts that's like so easy that they have to work hard to make it hard. So try not to get overwhelmed. They're trying their very best to make it hard because the idea of continuity is so simple. It just means that it's smooth curve with no holes, no gaps. Okay, here's another one. So this one, I've got a parabola shape over here and a straight line there, but it doesn't matter what's going on. It's all about the disconnect. So at the X value of two, it's on this smooth curve, true. The x value of four, smooth line, true, always true. A and C, always true. B is the only one I'm not sure of. And sure enough, looking at the graph here, there's a gap. It is not continuous. Let's double check that with the values by plugging in the three into the top and the bottom. And you can see that they do not come out equal. This would be nine minus three is six. This one would be negative one, not equal why it was false. This one here, I've got this piecewise function. You can see it splits there at 150. So it says true or false, the function is continuous for all values in the domain. So that's going to be a false statement because right there at 150, what's going on? Do they meet up? Is it discontinuous? Let's double check. You may be able to tell just from the numbers, but let's just double check. And you can see that these give you the numbers 1500 as opposed to 1350. Sorry, get out of hand with those zeros there. Since those are not the same, it is discontinuous there at 150 specifically, that gap. So that means the answer to this question is no. No, because it's discontinuous at 150. All right, so the asymptotes go up forever. We can never divide by zero. So it kind of looks like eventually if we went up high enough, it might do one of these, but it doesn't. It never meets up. They both shoot up forever and ever and ever, and you can never reach a value high enough that they would connect to each other. So because of that, asymptotes are always discontinuous. So right here, if I asked about negative two, I could plug in negative two. It might give me a weird number, but it's continuous. It does not divide by zero. No holes, no gaps. Zero, zero is fine. Parts A and C are always true. They're just giving you values that you can plug in without a problem. But part B at negative one specifically, negative one plus one is zero. Since I can't divide by zero, that one is false. There's an asymptote. Okay, no matter what, I can never divide by zero. So the limits, remember, if it canceled out, if there was just a hole instead of an asymptote, it was okay. But the continuity, it has to connect. So even if it was just a hole, it would still be discontinuous. Anything that makes the denominator zero is discontinuous no matter what. Okay, so this one right here at negative three, good, we got a value, no problem. At negative one, right here, we got a value, no problem. But right here at two, there's that asymptote. Again, even though it kind of looks like it might be a really steep parabola, it's not. They shoot up to infinity. They never, ever meet. Okay. This one right here, they give us an equation. And this looks like that one from the limits that might have canceled out, but again, it doesn't even matter because even the whole would have been discontinuous. So there's no work involved. We already know that one is bad. 
okay? It's discontinuous at one. No matter what. So on these intervals, I just need to check, does that interval include the number one? Number one is the bad one. So if I went from negative three up to one, but then didn't include the one, that would be fine. One is not included. We are continuous. Everywhere except x equals one, that's fine. If you're bigger, if you're smaller, it doesn't matter. You're good. It's only at specifically the value one that we're discontinuous. All real numbers, we're not good because the real number one is discontinuous. Okay, what if I'd had this one? Then I would have been bad. Okay, now I've included the one. This one would not be continuous. Okay. All right, one more. Again, here's those piecewise just to test your brain. So they said the limit as x approaches 1 is negative 2. It has a limit coming from the left and the right. It has the same limit of negative 2. But the value specifically f of 1 is 2. So it's not where it looks like he's going to go. It's this different value of 2. Is it continuous at 1? So let's spot which one of these graphs looks right. And then let's see if it would be continuous there. So it says the limits coming from the left and from the right should both meet at negative two. So let's look at that. The point uh, one should look like it comes to negative two. One negative two would be right here. So that's not our guy. One negative two, oh, maybe, here he is. One negative two, that's not our guy. One negative two, oh, maybe. Okay, so we've got it narrowed down. It's not these two. This one, we had the dot in the wrong spot, dot in the wrong spot. But this one, notice that it had an f of 1 equal to negative 2. And it said over here that the f of 1 should be equal to not negative 2, but 2. This is our guy. See how everywhere else it looked like it should have been at negative 2. But that one specific dot was different. f of 1 was equal to two. Had that kind of weird oddball spot. So would he be continuous there? No, because he had a hole, okay? If I were drawing this, I'd have to pick up my pencil, make a different dot, and then come back down again. It is discontinuous, okay? So that is the whole lesson on continuity. Again, don't overthink it. It's just as easy as it seems. You just have to be able to draw it without picking up your pencil. Now the idea of the limits and the continuity are what we're gonna build together for the derivatives in our later chapter. So it kind of seems like we're all over the place, but we're building to this bigger picture.